Hey guys, it is Friday here in West Virginia, and it is time for us to do our Free It Friday, and today we're kind of combining it with a Funny Car Friday, and we're going to be unboxing a brand that we probably have only unboxed one or two other times tops on my channel throughout the past four years that we've been doing this, and that is Action, or also known as RCCA, the Racing Collectible uh, I think it's, what is it, Racing Race Car Collectibles of America, something like that it stands for. And Action is also in uh, cahoots with, I think, Hasbro, because they own the rights to the Winter Circle name. And that is your retail release of some of the Action Collectibles. Because uh, sometimes they make it over into the Adult Collectible line. But uh, usually the adult collectible line that's branded as Action, RCCA, are much more detailed. But sometimes you'll get those cheaper cars in a little window box that are sold at like racetracks, at the souvenir trailer for each driver at NASCAR races and stuff. So <clears throat> the um, retail stores get those too, but packaged as Winter Circle. Well, they used to anyways. Winter Circle is long gone now as far as what I know. But anyways, this here is a really, really sweet car. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the GOAT of <clears throat> the funny car racing. I know, uh, like, when he won all his championships back in the 90s, the technology made drag racing much easier than it was, like, in the 70s, funny cars and stuff. But he was back around then, and... Uh, as far as I know, he did fairly well then. I was just really up to date on it in the 90s when he won all of his championships pretty much back then. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if there's anybody else that has won that many or not. I know there are some really um, aggressive drivers, really cool drivers in the history of NHRA Funny Car, like Jungle Jim and... Uh, the ball like Snake and Mongoose and such people like that. And Kenny Bernstein, uh, was also pretty popular in Funny Car in the 70s. And he went into the rails in the, I think, late 80s, early 90s. And I think that's where he became most popular is in the rail jobs, the dragsters. Uh, but <clears throat> anyways, this car here is, uh, done by Action. And Action claims, like, Auto World to be true to scale, um, and such. So, this is, um, the Chevy Monza that John Force ran back in the 70s. They have two or three other Monzas of John Force from Action. And this, uh, one I picked up fairly cheap on eBay. And as you can see here on the tag, they always put what it is, the production quantity, and if the car was released any other way, kind of like how Mini GT sometimes releases stuff as like Miho exclusives. You have that production, then you have like the international production, but they don't really enlighten you on this. That's one thing I liked about Action, that they enlightened you on what, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what they were producing of this car. And as you can see, it says John Force, Brute Force 1978 Monza Funny Car. Production quantity is going to be 15,524 total production of all of the releases. There's an ARC, which is one of 12,000, and then there is the RCCA, which is the one of, it looks like, 3,500. So this is your, I guess this would be the ARC, Action Racing Collectible release. Well, yeah, obviously it is. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, the RCCA stuff usually were in little window boxes. Uh, or sometimes in an enclosed box, kind of like the Mini GT stuff. And you have to take the car out of the box to actually see it. They had some stuff like that. Uh, usually that was mainly on the 124s and uh, such things like that. I think they even had some 118s at one point in time action, but mostly it was NASCAR. For the NHRA stuff, it was just 124 and I think maybe 143rd. Uh, so this car is from, I believe, like the late 90s. We'll see here if we can find a copyright here somewhere. 
And as you see, manufactured by Action Performance Companies, Action Platinum, then the Racing Collectible Cars of America. Yeah, here it is. Racing Collectibles Club of America is what RCCA was. And then where to find them online, the phone number, and the whole nine yards. Except for copyright year, and I believe it was in the late 90s. Because I remember seeing these for sale, yeah, right here. 1996 Hendrick. But that's, uh, goes for any of these. I know this isn't Hendrick Motors, obviously. Hendrick is NASCAR. But, uh, this is a 1996 production, 1997. Uh, so this I remember seeing when I had cars in the Cleveland Autorama. Uh, real cars, actually, and then seeing these for sale, because that was actually one of the best die-cast shows, in my opinion, to come to, like, Cleveland was the Autorama. It was pretty cool. There was a bunch of vendors there. You could get some really good deals on stuff there. Uh, but I never grabbed one of these. I contemplated getting a 124th a couple times, but never did. And now, since I'm collecting 164th and trying to get back into my racing stuff... <clears throat> I figured, what the heck, I would give one of these a shot, and as I mentioned, this one I got on eBay, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to take a drink of water, uh, I got this one on eBay for a reasonable price, I think it was like $5.95, nobody else bid on it, I was the only bidder, and the shipping was only 5 bucks. so with tax and everything, I have less than like $12 in it, so can't really beat that, because I think these retailed even back in the late 90s at like $9.95 or $12.95, something like that. So, anyways, what's cool about these two is the package. The package opens like a Protecto pack. It's reusable. So, these blister packs, you don't have to cut them open and throw them away. You can actually take your car out, display it how you want it, keep your blister pack, and then later on, if you want to display it, package you can if you want to sell it you can you still have the package and you can't consider it opened or loose you can just consider it as new package now the only thing that i have against this and i showed you this on some of the high-end legends cars from hot wheels that one being specifically and it was the paint rashing issue. Now, as you can see on the roof of this, there's some bubbles here. It was a little worse than this. Not much worse, but a little bit. So I took some rubbing compound and hit it and got some of the rough, not really rough, but I guess the more like textured look of it off. And it just left the bigger little bubbles and such things. So this thing is almost 30 years old and that's the only paint rash that it has so that's not too bad considering but as i mentioned before it seems like the thinner castings that are uh like the more detailed higher end that they may make a little thinner to try to get the more detail has a more tendency to have paint rash and it also depends on how it's stored if it's hot and humid there's moisture and stuff in your storage areas, then most of the time you'll see paint rash on your cars. If it's against like the PVC plastic, sometimes it has a tendency to provoke it to start. Um, sometimes styrofoam. I don't know. I just noticed that when they're packaged in hot, humid conditions, most likely they're going to have paint rash. Uh, <clears throat> unless it's Hot Wheels, regular Hot Wheels, the $1 little Hot Wheel, even some of the premium stuff that's like six or seven bucks that's retail sales, usually don't have that issue. Um, unless it's like super hot and humid, then it may. But I actually never had any issues with premiums or main lines when I was living in the Philippines. Everything I bought, new or old, always were pretty decent. The only thing I had problems with were some of the rubber tires from the early treasure hunts from, like, the early 2000s. They were getting tacky and sticky from the hot, humid conditions that they were stored in. They were, like, gummy, kind of. But the paint held up great. So, those cheap Hot Wheels have the best die-cast, uh, I guess, formula, as I could say. It's just the way it is. 
what I've noticed. But anyways, back to this car. As I showed you, it has a little bit of paint rare, so if you do buy these, don't pay a lot of money for them. Especially if it's on eBay, because you're probably going to have a little bit of paint rash on it. Maybe not all of them, but most, I would probably say do. Uh, I would try to find them in person. That's what I'm going to do with Kenny Bernstein's Plymouth Arrow. I'm trying to find it in person or for five or six bucks on eBay so I can get it. And if it does have some paint rash, hey, I'm not going to feel too bad. So these do have your flip-up body. And some nice detail. You have your fire extinguisher over here your cage the base is metal unlike some of these like uh the winter circle stuff would be plastic but the base on this one is metal pretty heavy car the engine is a separate piece separate unit and it's actually multi-pieces as you see valve cover supercharger are all separate the blower belt separate transmission even looks to be a separate piece you have your small fuel tank there and it does come with a body prop. I just never took it out. It is housed in the end cap of one of those plastic pieces that hold the car in place in the blister. So, yeah, this is a very nicely detailed car. I'm going to try to eventually get Bruce Larson's uh, USA 1 Monza and the Army Monza. And we will compare them to this. Uh, John Force Monza, to, meaning we're going to compare Hot Wheels to action and see how the scaling is and see the details, who's better. Because Hot Wheels does a fine job on their drag strip demons with the Monza and stuff. But if you're looking for the Monza funny car on a budget, action probably is the best way to go and it has a huge amount of detail. So, pretty sweet little car for the 12 bucks shipped to the door price not too bad so that is it guys <clears throat> excuse me so a little choked up i'm gonna try to come back this weekend and show you some other stuff i have a story to tell you about about some experience i have on ebay with some wrong items shipped to me uh maybe we'll do a video on that and get your opinion on what you would do because i'm still contemplating what i would do so maybe we'll do a video on that say tomorrow so tune back in and it has a lot to do with funny cars. So we'll see what happens and uh, what you guys think I should do. So I'll make a video on that and I'll see you back here probably tomorrow, Sunday at the latest. So thanks for watching guys and enjoy the start to your weekend.